This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Changing velocity with position. All right, so make sure you know that if you type something here, once you hit run, it submits to your teacher. I know because I'm a teacher. So my students don't type junk so you can hit run. It won't let you change it once you hit run. Okay, so let's be careful. On uh, one advantage to using the velocity blocks inside conditionals, if blocks, okay, so using velocity inside, using speed inside if statements, is that your sprite keeps moving even after the condition stops being true. For example, you only need to press a key once to start the color spinning wheel, and it keeps spinning forever. Right, because once it starts, it keeps going. We gave it a speed, but we never tell it to stop. The code below uses if statements to make a sprite move in different directions. Look at the if statements that check the sprite's position and set its velocity. All right, so here's an if statement, and what's this doing? If fish.x is less than zero. So it's seeing if its x value is less than zero. Well, zero x is over here. So if you're less than zero, you're like over here, like edge of screen, off screen. All right, or if the x value is greater than zero, well, this is about, or greater than 400. This is about 400. So if I'm greater than that, I'm way over here. What does it do? Okay, fish.setAnimation left, fish.setAnimation, or fish right, left. I'm assuming, right? Fish.R, we're changing the animation. And then what else? The fish's velocity is going to equal two. Huh, well, that's weird. So if the second or the millisecond, because the draw loop runs 30 times a second, so I'm running 30 times a second, I'm saying, hey, is the fish's x value less than zero? Well, if it's less than zero, it's right here. So what does it do? If, if it's not true, if the computer says false, that's not true, it doesn't run this code inside, it just goes beneath, it does this if statement, hits the bottom, draws the sprites, goes back around and checks everything again. If it is true, if my fish is, I don't know, at negative 2x, this would be true, and what happens then is we run this code inside. So we change the fish's animation to fish r. I wonder if fish r's animation is right. So I start looking this way, interesting. And my velocity for x is 2. Well, if I'm changing the velocity to 2, I'd be headed that way. Well, let's see now if it's greater than 400. So if I'm over here, what do I do? Change my animation to left. I believe fish L is at the velocity of negative 2. So I'm going to enter in how I would answer this. Keep in mind, you found this video, your teacher would too. Plagiarism is serious and utterly unacceptable. I'm going to type my stuff in. I'll talk about it with you. Make sure you have your own answer in your own words. All right. The fish appears to go between the two sides of the game screen. If the fish reaches either edge, x equals 0, x equals 400, the fish's the fish animation changes to possibly face left or right. And the velocity powers the fish in the opposite direction. All right, so boom, zoop. Not perfect. Make sure yours is in your own words. I'm going to check this out. Hi, fish. Click. Go, go, swim, swim, swim. I don't know why I'm cheering. Boom. Awesome. Onward. 